Good morning. Good morning and welcome to worship this morning. It's Sunday, May 3rd. It's the fourth Sunday of Easter and we're glad to have you with us this morning. I'm Pastor Jane McCready. I'm the pastor here at Faith Lutheran Church in New Providence, uh, New Jersey. And joining me this morning, my thanks to my colleague Shay Veloso, our Minister of Music, who is with us. And thanks also to Gary McCready, who is recording our service for us this morning. Our liturgy is posted online at our website and was also mailed ahead. If, you're, uh, if you are a part of our, our email group, then you should have received that in the, in the mail this weekend. In your prayers this week, we ask that you remember all the folks on our prayer list, and particularly the family of Joe Van Zyl, Cheryl Boxstad, who died this week, and the family of Nathan Butler Sr., a friend of Becky and Richard Ross. Our thanks to all of you who continue to care for others, and particularly our soup kitchen ministry. Uh, this week we dropped off more than 700 sandwiches and five dozen brownies and muffins and 40 cloth face masks. Uh, we'll be going to soup kitchen for, uh, for the next several weeks, at least till the middle of June, and we are doing that every Thursday. We leave here at uh, around 9 o'clock, promptly at 9, so if you could get your, um, your sandwiches over before then, that would be great. We will get them over to Soup Kitchen. Um, again, that's every Thursday, and regardless of whether or not you've signed up, we can always, always use those sandwiches. There was a congregational mailing that went out this week, and we invite your gifts for Lutheran Social Ministries of New Jersey. LSM cares for seniors and families right here in New Jersey, and we'll be sharing those gifts with them later uh, in, the, in the spring. Our spring-fall collection looks different this year. Uh, we are not collecting food, but rather we are collecting your financial gifts that we will share with the Somerset Food Pantry in Boundbrook and with St. John's Soup Kitchen in Newark. And a quick note and reminder that we have Sunday school this morning at 1045, and uh, I will meet you there. Uh, hopefully, um, we'll get there in time. 1045 via Zoom. If you didn't get the link, send me a quick email. I'll check my email before I log on to Zoom, and uh, we'll get you that link. Again, welcome. We are glad that you're with us this morning for worship. Let us begin our liturgy now. Trusting in the word of life given in baptism and hearing God's call, we gather to worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share God's peace.
of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh God, our shepherd, you know your sheep by name and lead us to safety through the valleys of death. Guide us by your voice that we may walk in certainty and security to the joyous feast prepared in your house. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with, he, with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading this morning is from the second chapter of the book of Acts. The baptized devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayers. All came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added back to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading this morning is from the second chapter of First Peter, beginning with the second verse. It is a credit to you if being aware of God you endure pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure when you are beaten for doing wrong, what credit is that? But if you endure when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to do this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that free from sins we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel is recorded in the 10th chapter of St. John, beginning with the first verse. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all of his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him, because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him, because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. <clears throat> One of the most recognized and well-known images of Jesus is the painting of a shepherd by 
by Warner Salmon. Many of you have probably seen it, and it's Jesus holding a crook in one hand and cradling a lamb in the other, surrounded by sheep and lush green hills and valleys. So many of us, probably of a particular age, have that same image of Jesus stuck in our heads from when we were children. And we remember stories of shepherds and what they do. They protect the vulnerable, they pick up the lost and the wounded, and they carry them back to the safety of the flock. On one of our stops in Ireland last summer, we saw a working demo of sheep herding. And my most vivid memories from that day were the beautiful rolling countryside, the dog listening, responding to the voice of the sheep farmer, and in turn, the flock of sheep moving together in response to their direction. And of course, if one or two strayed, they didn't leave them, but they went back for them. Our lessons this morning on what's come to be known as Good Shepherd Sunday remind us of our ministry. Even when we might be tempted by the world around us, to forget that we're here to care for so many. We need those reminders as we continue to gather each week to worship remotely in this new way. Because for too many people, church has been limited to the confines of a building and the walls that surround us. It's difficult to see beyond our own needs and our own wants and desires. And yet, if we've learned anything in these last couple of months of social distancing, if we've learned anything, it's that we've learned the vastness of God's kingdom and the understanding that this is the very definition of Christ's church, the very meaning of what it means to be the church and what the church should be. Our faith is limitless, and God will always be bigger than we can understand or even imagine. We need to continue to grow and to be touched by the fullness of God's grace. It's why we continue to find new ways to share ministry in this constantly changing world around us, because God's world needs our care needs our love, needs to be reminded of Christ's sacrifice on the cross, and to be reminded that that sacrifice wasn't an end, but rather a new beginning for each of us. Our lessons this morning remind us of God's grace and the hope of Easter. The community that John envisions, welcomes, and celebrates all of God's people with open arms, and that's what the resurrection is all about. It's about Jesus bringing us together, bringing us home, and giving us hope, giving us life, even in our darkest times. And there's perspective for days like today, for weeks and months like we've just been through. The gift, the hope, the promise of Easter isn't something that just takes place on a particular day that takes us away from all that is. Easter brings us together and reminds us that it's a gift that gives us strength to deal with all things, like the reality of a worldwide pandemic that's taken the lives of millions and millions of people across the globe like the grief that countless people are facing, like the Bonenbergers and the Box and the Van Ziles, like the burdens each of us hold on to and bring with us this, mer this morning, family and relationships, health and work and money and school. In the midst of all our challenges and the midst of the worst of our days, Scripture reminds us this morning that God is there with new life, to be with us and to wipe away all of our tears. And just in case you're wondering if what we do makes a difference, just ask them, what is it that Jesus would do? As we look at the systemic greed and ignorance that surround us, 
that's all too often lifted up and celebrated, we need to make sure it's clear that our faith has another answer, and it's a much different answer. Listen to our readings again. Listen to that first lesson. Consider the plight of those without a home and food and medical care and education, and then take a stand and make a difference. Our work as Christians is to embrace one another, to share the gospel, to tear down walls and fences, to open the gates, and to remove barriers that restrict us and limit Christ's church and Christ's work. The voice of the shepherd calls us and leads us to continue the work of the great good shepherd who shows us how to live and reminds us to be his voice the voice that stands for justice in a world that will always, always need our care.
Lord God, restore them to wholeness in body and soul. We also pray for those who are mourning the death of loved ones, particularly for the family and friends of Nathan Butler Sr. and Joe Van Sire. Send all those who are in pain the comfort of the Good Shepherd, whose rod and staff will lead them through the valley of grief to the light of hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our good shepherd, we give you everlasting praise and thanks that we will one day dwell in your house forever with all the dear saints who have gone before us. May we continue our journey on life's pilgrimage secure that the gate to heaven is open through the mercy and unending love of your Son, Jesus Christ, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all those for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray now as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love, through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>